I'm going to give you a clear step-by-step -step path for how I would learn full stack web development again today. No fluff, no endless options. I have nothing to sell you, just a roadmap that you can actually start following. And I know it can be a little bit overwhelming. There's just too many technologies, too many opinions, and frankly, too many of these roadmaps that all seem to sort of contradict each other. So here's what I believe to be the most straightforward, linear way to actually learn. And this is going to be tailored for modern development, understanding that things have changed a lot with AI and everything happening in the world. So the first thing to learn is the basics of HTML, which stands for Hypertext Markup Language. So HTML defines the content and structure of a website. This is going to be things like headings, paragraphs, lists, images, links, and so on and so forth. Think of it as sort of taking some text and defining what that text actually represents. And with HTML, you don't necessarily need to master it. The goal is simple, just be able to take some content and turn it into a valid HTML page. Now for where to learn this, the easiest thing is just YouTube tutorials, but you can also use tools like Codecademy if you want. And as you're learning, if you do have questions, you can ask those questions to AI tools like ChatGPT, but just make sure that you are actually asking questions to understand rather than having them do the work for you. Okay, so next comes CSS or cascading style sheets. CSS controls how your site actually looks. Think about colors, spacing, fonts, layout. So HTML is that content and structure and CSS is the presentation of that content and structure. And again with this, you don't need to go too deep yet. Just focus on the basics. Make sure you understand declarations like setting a color, selectors to choose where that color actually goes, and simple layouts like using the box model, which is essentially the basic model for how a page is laid out with the size of the content, padding for that content, and then margin between different pieces of content. And again for this, you can use some YouTube tutorials and you can ask questions to AI models. But really, I think the best way to learn the very basics of CSS is simply to just play with it a bit. And remember, the goal here isn't to master CSS. It's not to memorize every property or even to have a deep understanding of it. We're just working on the basic syntax at this point and we will revisit this in a bit. Now, very important, take a pause, take a little breath and work on some kind of project. Nothing crazy, this isn't your Y Combinator application. It's just a chance to reinforce what you learned and add some repetition because ultimately that's what helps you actually learn and retain information. A very basic idea here would be to build some kind of about me, almost resume or portfolio type personal website. But of course, you could do something completely different if you want. You could make a blog or a recipe book or whatever it might be that's interesting to you at this point. For tools to do this, I would personally recommend that you write the code in VS Code and minimize any use of the AI features. Now, of course, when you do have questions, you can ask the AI, but you just don't want to become too reliant on it. This is also where you'll start using browser dev tools. So I'd recommend either Chrome or Firefox, and you can right click and click inspect element. You'll get more familiar with this over time, but for now, just know that this allows you to see the HTML structure of your page and it allows you to make edits right there and see the CSS that actually reflects in each element. And now once you're done with that first website, big congrats, you built your first website, but now it's time to move on to JavaScript. So JavaScript adds logic and interactivity. A common analogy that we use here is that HTML is the skeleton, whereas CSS adds skin and clothes and whatnot. And then JavaScript is sort of like the brain. It allows for actual functionality. And this step is going to take the longest, so try not to rush it. You want to focus on learning the fundamentals here. So this is going to be things like variables, functions, conditionals, loops, basic data structures like objects and arrays, and a lot of other concepts related to JavaScript. For this, I would actually prefer that you follow a structured course. I actually have a free one on YouTube as do many other creators, or you're welcome to pay for one if you want. That's up to you and how you learn best, but I would try to follow something a bit more structured. Otherwise it can be a little bit overwhelming. Now, similar to HTML and CSS, you don't want to go too deep into JavaScript just yet. We just need to understand the basics for now. And once you do understand those basics, the one area to immediately go just a bit deeper in is going to be DOM manipulation. This is how JavaScript changes the HTML page. It's how we respond to clicks. It's how we update text, how we show and hide elements. This is where it starts to feel like we're actually building modern applications rather than just putting some text on the screen. And now once again, you know what time it is. 
project time. So here I want you to build something a little more interactive. Build a small game, a quiz app, a tic-tac-toe game, or you could try to build something a little bit more useful, like a productivity tool if you really want. It doesn't matter too much as long as it's in scope with your current skills, and recognize that this is going to be the hardest thing you've built so far, and that's good. This is your chance to learn JavaScript a little bit deeper, and as you're doing that, to learn how to debug to learn how to read error messages, to learn how to use the console, and ultimately how to search for answers effectively. And again, I highly recommend that as you're doing this, you actually don't use AI very much here. You can use it to search for some of those answers, but just don't use it to write any of the code for you. So ultimately, I would use the AI to explain errors, to clarify concepts, and to walk you through logic step by step. Just essentially try to avoid using it for anything where the AI is actually writing code that you end up using. Because if you do just paste the code, you'll feel productive, but you won't actually be learning. And we will get to this point where we let AI write a lot of code for us, and this will unlock a lot of productivity. But for now, we need to be learning so that we are actually best positioned to take advantage of these AI tools down the line and to understand the code that it's writing. Now, I mentioned earlier that we're going to be revisiting some topics, and this is right now. We need to take a little bit of a deeper dive. First of all, in HTML, you should learn about accessibility, semantic markup, and you could also look into things like tables and forums if you want. And then for CSS, we want to learn about responsive design, media queries, and flexible layouts using Flexbox and Grid. And if you want, you could also go a little bit deeper here into things like transitions and animations, just depending on how interested you are in CSS. And really the goal with HTML and CSS here isn't, again, to memorize everything. We're not trying to memorize every tag in HTML. We're not trying to memorize every property in CSS. We're just trying to become a little bit more fluent with them and get exposed to different types of projects. Now, as a note here, we haven't talked at all about frameworks and libraries, and that's actually intentional. Frameworks and libraries exist to essentially be shortcuts, but there's actually nothing that we can do with them that we can't do without them. This is known as vanilla development, and it's what we've been doing this whole time. In practice and in industry, we don't do much vanilla development because it is less efficient, but learning it first makes these frameworks and libraries so much easier to learn and to actually use down the line, which we will be doing very soon. But now, at this point, you should be somewhat comfortable on the front end, so it is time to start learning a little bit more about the back end. So all of the code we wrote so far runs in the browser or the client as we sometimes refer to it. And the backend really just means code that runs somewhere else. And before we write any backend code, we should first understand how we can actually consume it or use some other backend that somebody else has written. And there's a variety of ways that this works, but the most common and simple is going to be through HTTP network requests. Essentially, this is you writing code from the browser to say, hey, go to this place and ask this server for something. Practically speaking, this means that you need to learn how to use the fetch function in JavaScript. And with learning fetch, you'll need to first learn asynchronous programming with promises. I actually have a whole video on this topic, but of course there's plenty of other places to learn them as well. And for practice, use some public APIs. These are application programming interfaces, or you can just think of them as backends that somebody else built that you can use in your website. So either revisit one of your previous projects, or build a completely new one that uses one of these APIs to bring some interesting data into the website. And then after you use a fairly simple API, I would also start practicing using the GPT API from OpenAI or another similar one from another model provider. The reason being that a ton of startups now are essentially just wrappers around these APIs. So learning how to use them is actually a very, very valuable skill that a lot of people are looking for. Plus it just exposes you to a bit more of a complex API, which can help regardless of what APIs you end up consuming in the future. And now we are going to move on to writing our own backend code, but first, we need to learn how to use the terminal. So with the terminal, we just want to learn the basics. So how to navigate between folders, how to create files, and how to delete files. And then from there, we need to learn about Git and GitHub. So Git is a way to track your code history. Think of it sort of like Google Docs for code. And then GitHub is simply a website to upload and store your Git repository. So to store that version history. And using these is a very standard practice across software development teams. So it is a very important thing to learn. But luckily, we don't need to learn these super deep. You don't need to be a master of Git or the terminal. You just need to be able to use them a little bit to be able to contribute in these teams that are using Git and GitHub to track their code. Okay, so now for backend development, there are a lot of choices. You can learn a million different languages 
But again, the goal that we have is a streamlined approach. So for that reason, I would recommend Node.js with Express. So this allows you to use JavaScript on the back end. So the reason I recommend it is it's the same language we already learned. This means less mental overhead and you'll just be able to get started a lot quicker. And with Node.js, you'll also have to learn NPM, which is the Node Package Manager, which essentially just lets you reuse open source code. And this is going to become a huge part of real development in the future. And now that you're able to build your own backend APIs using Node.js and Express, I would learn a little bit about databases. So essentially, we just need a place to store data. And there's two main types of databases, SQL databases and NoSQL databases. So a SQL database is a relational database. You can think of this sort of like a bunch of tables or spreadsheets. And NoSQL is basically just anything else. So for SQL, I would probably start with Postgres or MySQL, but there's a million flavors of SQL and they're all very similar. It doesn't matter too much. And then for NoSQL, I would maybe look at MongoDB, but again, there's a ton of options. You can use whichever ones you might choose, but I think that is probably the best choice because it tends to be the most popular. And with these, again, you don't need to master them, just understand their purpose and the trade-offs and at least have some type of database that you're comfortable using. And now with all of this information, guess what time it is? It is time to build a full stack project. And you can expand on something you've already built or you can build something completely new. That's up to you. But in particular, I want you to add some degree of persistence with the database and probably some custom backend APIs to interact with that database. And with this project, I think you can start using just a little bit more AI. Still write most of the code by hand, but you can start experimenting with tools like Cursor to try out some autocomplete functionality, have it try to improve your code and help you figure out how to structure things. And then of course, you can also still use the AI to answer all of your questions. Okay. So now, what a lot of people have been waiting for, I do wanna talk a little bit about libraries and frameworks. There's a lot of buzzwords here that you've probably heard. React, Vue, Angular. Frameworks are abstractions. They hide complexity. And I feel like if you learn them too early, everything just sort of starts to feel like magic. And magic, while cool, is hard to debug. But hopefully at this point, you're actually ready for it. So I would personally start with React. It's the most popular, it's the most marketable skill, and it has the largest open source ecosystem with the most tutorials and everything else. Also, a lot of other frameworks and libraries are actually based on concepts from React. So I think learning it first just makes a lot of sense. Once you start getting a feel for React, what I would do is take one of your old projects and actually rebuild it with React. Personally, I think this is the best way to make sure that you are understanding exactly what is the vanilla code and what is the React code that it is replacing. And now this whole time we've been using JavaScript and some of you are probably wondering what about TypeScript? So TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript, meaning that all JavaScript is valid TypeScript, but not all TypeScript is valid JavaScript. In particular, TypeScript adds features around stricter typing, which becomes more important with larger scale projects. And for that reason, it tends to be the industry standard instead of JavaScript. That said, I always tell people to learn JavaScript first, then React, then TypeScript. With the idea being that by the end of this, we will use React with TypeScript. But I think it is important to understand what if that code is just standard JavaScript, and then what comes from React, and then what is coming from TypeScript. And if you have a good understanding of JavaScript, you should be able to learn TypeScript, at least to a point of usability in literally like a day or two. So I don't think it matters too much to wait a bit. But at this point, I would recommend that you start using TypeScript and start understanding it more. You don't need to go super deep in it again, but just start using it. And as you use it more and more, you'll find that you just naturally develop a deeper understanding of it. Okay, so now let's zoom out a little bit. We've talked a lot about writing code and building websites, but I think it's also important to understand where that code actually executes and how the internet is actually functioning. Essentially, what happens when you type a URL into the browser? In particular, I want you to learn about HTTP as well as HTTPS and DNS or the domain name system. Some people choose to be complete experts in this area, but really I just want you to understand enough to be somewhat conversational in it. You don't need to spend too much time on this, just learn a little bit. And next I would focus on deployment and cloud computing. So, so far our websites have lived on our computers, but I can't host a commercial website like that, or I guess I could, but if the power went out or the internet goes out at my house, so would that application and that's not very good. So for this, you'll wanna host your site on a major cloud provider like AWS, GCP, or Azure. And AWS is probably the most common starting point, but it's fine as are all of the others or even any of the smaller providers. 
really you should just be able to put your application up online somewhere. And from there, you can also explore infrastructure. So things like Docker and containers. That said, this isn't really necessary in the short term. And a lot of developers honestly just sort of learn a bit about it when they actually need it, myself included. I don't consider myself an expert in this field at all. That said, one thing that does matter and that you should learn about that is sort of related is security. So this is especially important if you use AI more and more because it does have a tendency to sort of write code with vulnerabilities. So you have to be really careful. So I would learn some common attacks like SQL injection, cross-site scripting, and cross-site request forgery. And then you want to learn the defenses for those attacks. Oftentimes, a lot of these are very simple concepts like input validation, authentication, and encryption. Now, one of the bigger topics over the last five to 10 years has been server-side rendering. Essentially, this allows you to do more complex logic on the server side and simplify the amount of code shipped to the front end. This can help with both performance as well as SEO or search engine optimization. In particular here, I would probably learn Next.js as it has become sort of the de facto choice for server-side rendering, especially with React. And again, what I would do here is take one of the apps you've already built and rebuild it using Next.js and then also redeploy it. And as you go through all of this, you'll naturally find things that you really, really love and frankly, things that you don't. So lean into those things that you enjoy, but at the same time, don't skip fundamentals and use AI as this sort of learning accelerator, but not a replacement for your own thinking. And then over time, you can sort of unlock more and more AI usage. And if you wanna see how exactly I'm making the most out of AI, you should watch this video next.